Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again, it's time for Dynamic Effort Bench Press Day. But a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please remember to click like down below. Uh, please comment down below, get some engagements going, and let's get over to the training. So, I was going to do this after the meet anyways, because I realize the way some of these meets are going. I may be competing on Fridays, usually on Saturdays, and if I want to do a lot of meets every year, um, I need to be ready to do it this way. So... I'm going to start doing my dynamic work early in the week and then max effort work later in the week so I can flow straight into meets in the future, particularly in weeks where I don't have to do a harsh water cut uh, for next year. And I've actually already signed up for, for the next meet after Worlds uh, for the next weight class up. But uh, it's going to be the point is I'm going to be used to doing max effort at the end of the week. So again, we just get slightly rested get an extra day or two off and just compete and I think that's the way that's going to go so today I went with a little heavier band tension It'll be one of the last few sessions where I actually have to use this rack to bench um, I'm going to have my bench station soon so um, ran 100 pounds of bands did my normal rotation to where I do three sets wide three sets medium three sets close and I think it's a good idea for me to to do that even if I end up being stronger at close grip. But it does give me the advantage of, of doing it this way. And something else I looked at when I started assessing just shoulder fatigue and everything else, as much as I love the incline and I love the carryover, uh, my bench was climbing really, really good from front raises. Without doing incline, it's a lot easier on my shoulders. And then I can focus on just things like heavy assistance pressing at a flat angle. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a lot of focus on floor pressing, um, I'm going to do more benching with my specialty bars, you know, all of that stuff. You know, figuring out wherever my weak links are will adjust, you know. So if I feel like I need more tricep, we'll do close grip benching. You know, if I need more pec, we'll do the pinkies on the rings and so on and so forth. And I think that's the way we're going to go. I'm going to do a lot of floor press, though, uh, to keep my shoulders healthy. All right. To keep my shoulders healthy. Uh, and again, Speed benching and other stuff will handle the, the deeper stretch at the bottom. As far as getting strong right at the chest, the front raises do that. Okay, I'm not as worried about it. I'll still do some benching. I'll have weeks where I do the normal pinkies on the rings though. But I do like the floor press. And I think it works really well for me right after speed benching. Uh, because I, I like to get really explosive at these. I'm trying to get good at pausing and driving as hard as I can for all 10 reps. Because again, that's what really, really hammers my pecs and my triceps uh, when I do it this way. So I like coming to that dead stop and just engaging. Because that's right about the point where I think I'm slowest at, particularly on my bench. And if I can get a little better at using some leg drive, I think we're going to be good there. But the floor press is a, is a phenomenal chest builder, right? And it's a pretty good tricep builder. But for me, I feel so much pec engagement if I pause at the bottom and just explode. So I'm trying to explode hard on these. But I am coming to a full stop and trying to really hammer that. Um, after that, I did my JM presses. And now that I've got my elbow tendons really, really, really healthy from doing the band work, I can adjust the band work down to a reasonable level to avoid some overuse. Um, and I can really work on JM presses. Now I have the advantage with the JM presses of if they start to become an inflammation issue, we can run reverse bands, we can run chains, we can do whatever we want. But I feel like they need to be a mainstay because uh, I do notice my close grip particularly goes up when I do these. I've definitely noticed that. Plus, uh, let's talk about getting power out of the bottom. This is, when compared to the band press downs, if I really want to get my triceps engaged out of the bottom of a bench more, this puts us into that lengthened position um, and it puts the triceps right at that position to where they're going to have to fire hard right out of the bottom. So it's not just a lockout exercise. This is, you know, a bit of a myth. Everyone thinks of triceps as purely lockout. And while they do are more biased towards the lockout than, say, the pectorals are due to some leverages, they're still important for getting out of the bottom of the bench. So I feel like, again, the JM press is an exercise that can help you get out of the bottom of the bench. Just like incline also does, front raises, all that stuff that works that upper chest and particularly the front delt does that. So um, also did my three sets of pull-ups. Again, rotating the grips around. And I might have weeks even where I do a set of each of the three grips. 
but I'm also wanting to leave myself the option of doing um, overhand stuff too here. But did my three sets of 10 using the medium grip this time, which means probably next, next upper body workout will go to the wide grip again. So again, the idea here, because I love pull-ups and I've had overuse injuries, most of my overuse issues have come either from pull-ups or overhead pressing, and the overhead press seems to be a no-no no matter what I do. But the pull-ups, it can be mitigated. And I want to just get good at low volumes of pull-ups, meaning no more than three sets. We're only going to do them a couple days a week and just try to get really, really good at them again. But also to avoid the overuse, we're going to rotate grips a lot. All right? Just rotate through the grips. Just get strong at general pull-ups. And I'd like to get back to where I can do 20 of these with my body weight, which is what I had done with the wide grip overhand at one time, um, you know, before running into a little bit of inflammation again you know, which impacted me at those meets. But again, I think it's going to be about avoiding overuse and just focusing on quality sets rather than just tons and tons of pull-up volume. All right, afterwards, I decided to do some reverse curls today instead of hammer curls. Again, great grip exercise. It still works your bicep, works the radial brachialis, all that stuff. It will build thick forearms. Uh, should help with my grip, you know, because grip is, is a big deal to me right now. It's what's going to limit my deadlift. So I think I want to use a mix of both um, reverse curls and hammer curls, All right? And again, to answer the questions people give about the supine grip stuff, they're like, why don't you do those? I'm like, because I believe that at my age they're detrimental. Um, supine grip curls are the number one cause of bicep tears. It's not deadlifts. It's not any of this other stuff. Surgeons will repair 10 to 20 curl injuries that they will for every deadlift injury. Um, plus, and I agree with Winning on this when he's pointed out he doesn't think for longevity we should be doing supine movements. That includes chin-ups, that includes underhand grip curling. But all this stuff works forearm better. Um, we're getting more muscles involved technically, right? Getting more muscles involved. And if we want to think about lengthening position, it technically puts more stretch on the bicep to do a hammer or an, a reverse curl. You know, we're, we're not getting as good a peak contraction, but does that really matter in the grand scheme of things? I don't know that it does. But again, the grip training is useful. So, uh, delt work, continuing to do delt work, supersetted with press downs, um, but also to make sure this is complete development. Uh, going back to what I was doing a week or two ago, instead of just doing one movement for three, I'm going to do two sets again of all three movements. I've got up to three at one time and then I've, I found out two lets me go a little heavier. And we get complete shoulder development here, you know, between these three movements doing front raises. So I do two, two shoulder movements, then a set of band press downs so that I only do three sets of press downs. Uh, because again, I'm doing the J-ohm presses. I don't need that much extra tricep volume. It's mainly just to give a different movement pattern and to continue to get the benefits of the bands on the tendons and the, and the recovery. But we went with the heaviest I've gone on these with 33 pound dumbbells. I managed to get 10 reps on each side both times. Um, and then I, I managed to squeeze out 50 reps with the blue bands on the band press downs. All right. And I'm surprised I'm on almost no carbohydrate at this point. When I say none, I'm talking about broccoli, spinach, peppers are my carbohydrate. Pretty much living on steak and eggs, uh, trying to get the water weight down. But the training still hasn't been impacted by it, right? We haven't really lost strength yet. But I'm also keeping salts a little bit high, which helps. And then I can cut all those salts out near the end to, to make weight as part of my uh, water fast. We'll just excrete it all out. But it's also keeping my, my body weight a little bit higher because of all the sodium. But uh, we got... 10 reps with the same weight on the side raises. And then I managed to get 12 on the rear delt flies. So again, I kind of like this little setup of running these three movements. And I do have some of my clients do it. Some of them don't because I have them doing some overhead pressing. So we change it up a little. Uh, but I have some of my other clients who actually have do the same rotation, particularly the ones who either need a lot of delt for benching or who actually do care about uh, the look thing. Some of my leaner guys, I let them do stuff like this just to bring those delts up. A perfect example, you guys have seen uh, Bravin on Instagram because he's got his own page. Um, see how he looks. I've got him on conjugate, but we do a lot of delt work. Um, and the, the guy looks like a bodybuilder, 
but he's getting ready. He wants to do powerlifting meets, and he's a personal trainer, <laughs> and he's pretty strong. We run conjugate, but we do do extra delt work, uh, and, you know, just to help with his look. But overall, pretty happy with today's workout, and I think moving forward, I'm going to run my rotation like this to where we do speed work at the start of the week, max work at the end of the week. Uh, but again, overall happy with performance today, happy with bar speeds, uh, happy with work capacity. So I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.